Hey everybody, this is just Nurse Court, and I am doing a video today on what's in my nursing bag. Um, so I thought that it would be fun to just go grab my backpack from my car, which is right here in front of me, and we will just go through it together and see what kind of stuff I have in here. Um, <laughs> Hopefully it's not too dirty, but yeah, we're just going to go take a look through and see what we got in my nursing bag. Alright, first off, I have this little um, clipboard that also holds goodies inside of it. Um, so I actually got this whenever I very first started my nursing journey, um, when I was working at my very first job. So I've had this for seven years. I think I just got it at Walmart. Um, but it is, I use it in the morning whenever I take report, um, and then I just kind of stick it in my desk and it stays there for the rest of the day. And as you can see, I have some report notes here, <laughs> um, from my last day at work, and I end up sticking these in my pocket. Um, so yeah, that is the first thing that's in my little clipboard, or my bag is my clipboard. And then it's kind of some of the stuff that I keep in here, um, I used to, the place that I work at now actually has report sheets that print off that have like all their labs and kind of information where their IV is, all that kind of stuff. It's called a nursing report sheet. So I don't use a brain anymore, but I used to use a brain. Um, and one of the girls at work made this one up and I thought maybe I would switch because I could put more patients on here instead of just one per sheet because um, this one would hold two. But I honestly haven't actually even used them so it was a great thought just haven't had a chance to use them um, so some other things that are in here just looking together um, so there is a oh I have an ACE and an R I work on a telemetry floor so right now I got a lot of cardiac stuff in here so this right here is an ACE and an R bliss so it lists all the different um, ACE inhibitors and then the Enzio retention blocker medications as well um, in case you forget them but they're pretty easy to remember just um, the ACEs usually end in um, Pril and the ARBs most of the time will end in like Artin like low Sartin so that's kind of um, kind of a quick little sheet that I can refer to but most actually I I never look in here. The only thing that I use out of here on a routine basis is, let's see if I can find it, um, and I've almost gotten to the point where I have it memorized now that I don't even use it, but it is um, one of the sheets that they gave us in orientation for my floor, and it's how to calculate um, the QTC, and there's examples of that. I'll kind of show you that. I don't know how that works, but anyway. Hopefully you can kind of see this a little bit, but the QTC, um, we do a corrected QTC, um, and what it accounts for is like any bundle branch blocks, if they have pacemakers, anything like that, um, but we calculate the QT interval um, for all of our patients on a daily basis whenever we print their telemetry sheets, but the QTC, there's a couple medications that we, um, that the doctors will start um, patients on at our floor routinely. Um, Sotolol is one of them and then the other one um, is Tikasin. And so those two medications can cause that QT interval to become prolonged and it can cause them to go into a basically a deadly arrhythmia um, like torsades that can lead into basically cardiac arrest. Um, so it's very important that we um, keep track of that QT interval because we don't want to get that too long because it can cause some definitely cardiac arrhythmias. So we calculate the QTC on our floor um, pretty often, especially on those patients when they start them on the medications. And once we give the med, then we have to do an EKG within like two to three hours and then we calculate it. Two nurses actually have to calculate the med, um, or sorry, calculate the, the QTC and then they sign off on the EKG and then away we go. So. And then of course the physician is still reviewing it at the very end, so it's not like um, it's just nurse driven, but um, the physicians and the nurse practitioners will also kind of double check and make sure the, that the actual QTC is calculated correctly. Um, so that's like the most important thing that I have in here. I have stuff from <laughs> all kinds of papers. You can see 
all kinds of stuff. A lot of it was just from, from my recent orientation, but that um, QTC calculation is the one that I refer to frequently, although now I pretty much have that formula memorized, so the only time I just do it is like if I just want to double check myself. But anyway, and then, oh, here's an interesting, so we just had Joint Commission come to our hospital. Yay, so fun. Um, luckily, they came when they did our chest pain accreditation when I was gone on vacation. Hallelujah. I hate Jayco. It is so stressful. So stressful. But they've been saying that they're coming for months, coming for months. So they set up like this little um, general patient tracer and has all these questions um, that possibly Joint Commission could have asked us and it's kind of some of the answers. So that's in there. I actually that. bought a new pack um, because my other pack was just about done and I got to have gum at work. So yeah, let's see. Um, oh, and then we cannot forget the lovely stethoscope. Um, so I did not know this whenever I was at joint, when I had joint commission come by the very first time when I worked, they never mentioned anything about wearing the stethoscopes around the neck. And I always do that at work. Um, just because I never know when I'm going to need it. And I guess whenever Joint Commission comes around, you're not supposed to be wearing stethoscopes around your neck. So, yeah, who knew? Not me. Um, cup. Gotta have a cup, definitely. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, <laughs> umbrella. You never know when it's going to rain. More times than not. I am so thankful to have an umbrella in my bag. I used to just keep it in my car. Now I stick it in my work bag because you never know when it's going to rain. Let's see what else is down here. Oh, yeah, Sharpie. <laughs> Sharpie that lost its lid. Yay, that should go into my pin bag. So now I have Sharpie colored bag. Oh, well, that's all right. Let's see. <laughs> Some change. And then a bunch of, oh, like cards. And this was given to me in orientation. A bunch of little pocket guides. <laughs> I never use these. The S bar, pre-rounding checklist. Um, oh yeah, our alcohol withdrawal protocol. Yay. So I guess that is kind of a handy, handy little thing. I just never have used it and it's in the bottom of my bag. All right, let's see. Then I have, oh, I have a few like pins and stuff like that. You never know when you're going to need that in my front bag. The other day I was realizing that I didn't have a pin light. Um, that's the one thing I, I do need to get. Oh, and some tape. <laughs> a bunch of pins in that pocket, but my new, my bag that I use for my pins, look how full this sucker is. Um, I got this in my FabFitFun box, uh, I don't know, like a year ago, I think it was a fall thing. And I'm like, well, I wasn't crazy about the color because, I mean, it doesn't really match with a whole lot. You have to be wearing fall colors. And anyway, so I thought, well, I'll just, and it folds, technically it folds over and it would be like a little, um, this part kind of folds over and I know you can't tell because it's screaming full, but it would be like a little um, clutch. Yeah. Anyway, I decided not to use it as a handbag because I um, needed it for work. I thought, well, that'd be a great idea for work. So I have in here lovely scissors. Yay. Um, when I worked in the ER, the, um, our nurse manager actually gave them to us and then it has, um, our, my initials on them right there. So I can never lose my scissors. If you take them, I'm going to know. Same with my, well, my old stethoscope, my new one. I didn't, I got a new cardiology four, Littman cardiology four. Um, stethoscope. My other one, I had the Cardiology 3, I think it was. And, uh, okay, so while we're talking about stethoscopes, I was going to tell you um, this little trick that I did not know, and so I totally messed up my stethoscope, my very first one. So I ended up buying a new one, like, earlier this year. But my other one, I had my name written on this here, my, I ordered it from the company and they um, wrote my name on there and then they engraved my name on the actual um, stethoscope, the metal part, the metal piece, the diaphragm and bell. Um, so yeah, anyway, so what I did whenever I would um, get out of like an isolation room, 
I would just take the wipes and wipe them off or if like even if it wasn't like C. diff it was just like a regular you know like uh, flu virus or whatever let's just say so I would use my stethoscope because I hate the isolation stethoscopes because they suck they suck so uh, I would just use my stethoscope and then I would um, just take one of the little wipes and wipe it all off and over time I noticed that kind of right in the middle it started getting really um, hard and I'm like hmm and eventually ended up cracking and basically the tube broke in two so I had to end up getting a new stethoscope well at first I tried to um, just get a new tube and put on there and I ordered it off of Amazon and I felt like I could just never hear as good as I could originally so I'm like forget that I'll just go and buy me a new stethoscope now that I'm gonna be going into nurse practitioner school so I think it was last year it was either earlier this year or last fall that I bought me a new stethoscope so I upgraded to the cardiology for um, I don't know maybe I can hear a little bit better I don't know I would have to compare it honestly it's been a while since I have used the other one successfully because it was cracked and broken and you know all that so but you can hear murmurs and stuff really good with the cardiology um, Lippmann stethoscope so I would recommend them um, it doesn't have to be the cardiology four, but anyway that's what I got in my bag they are a little more expensive I would say I don't know between two and three hundred I think Maybe they're less than that. I don't remember what I, I will link it. I will link it down below. That's what I will do. I will go on Amazon and link it down below so you can check it out for yourself. Um, let's see, what else is in my bag? Okay, tons of like pins and we have whiteboards in all of our rooms so we have to write stuff on the whiteboard. So I got lots of dry erase markers, highlighters, pins. My favorite pin, this one here, I got at the dollar store, no judging because it's already like broken the little clip thing fell off and then it's like completely the colors wearing off but I love the pins that have the multicolors. here's the reason why because whenever I work like two or three days in a row which I did this past weekend I love to use the different colors because if there's like any updates especially you know, I'll just make little notes in a different color like one day will be my generally my very first day I write everything in black and then um, as the time goes on, if I have any updates, then I will write those in, let's just say blue. And then I can easily see like what has happened that day so I can tell the nurse that day. So that's why I like to use the different colors. And you know, if there's any critical things that I definitely need, I'll, you know, I'll star it and underline it and say definitely, I gotta remember to t tell this to the nurse. So um, yeah, totally, excuse me there. I kinda had like little hiccups or something. I don't know what it was. But yeah, I love these pens with the multi-color all-in-one. Definitely, definitely highly recommend for uh, clinicals and for nursing practice because it's a lifesaver. Rather than having to have multiple pens, I can just carry this one in my pocket and I have multiple pens, so yay. Um, so that's like my favorite. So I, anyway, you can buy these at Walmart, but I was at the Dollar Tree the other day and they had these pens and I'm like, oh, Oh, wow they're only a buck so I got this one in like a turquoise color one and yeah okay so they are definitely losing their color but hey it was a buck so then chapstick can't forget that um, okay so no judging no judging I have to have a cell phone charger with me Although we are not supposed to have our cell phones out of the hospital, I do carry one in my pocket. And my phone, I have Sprint, and the area of the hospital that I work in, I think just about the entire hospital, has poor reception for Sprint. And so it sits there, and I even put it in airplane mode. I take, you know, the Wi Fi off, I take whatever, all the things I can think of, location services, I took that off, and it still drains my battery. I don't know why. So I will have to use my charger usually especially do it on the weekends it's hard to do it during the week because you know I don't want to get in trouble so sometimes I don't end up charging my phone during the day sometimes during the week what I'll do is just not basically turn my phone on until I take my lunch break and then I'm good to go so there's that let's see oh another alcohol which I'll heard a call page um, this is yeah the alcohol withdrawal protocol for our hospital 
and then it has the scoring on the back. So it's kind of a quick reference for us. I think they just gave them out the other day. Huh, ibuprofen, can't, can't forget that. Okay, I have all kinds of goodies in here. I got crystal light, so anyway, if I get a little tired of just water, water, I can throw this in my water and yay. Oh, Zoe, no, 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 don't take my chapstick. Come back, come back, come back. I'm gonna have to watch my things. She's such a thief. She loves pins and other stuff. Oh, here's my used package of gum. Um, let's see, got some alcohol wipes in there. Can't forget those. I was looking, I got tons of like boring stuff, like lots of pins and lots of stuff. <laughs> oh, insulin needle, anyone need one of those? Um, oh, and these are IV tubing end caps. You can put those on the end of your IV tubing to keep it sanitary. Let's see. Ah, this is what I was looking for actually, my calipers. So these here, I use every time I calculate that QTC. So I got these on Amazon. I don't know, they were pretty cheap. I thought I got a pin light with it, but I just don't remember. It might be in the bottom of my little, little bag here. But I know I definitely use those calipers all the time. Tons of pins, I see more alcohol wipes. Let's see, oh here's my new, my brand new pen that I haven't used yet, so yeah. A book, how can you go wrong with that? Hey Zoe, what are you doing there in the background? Um, let's see, more dry erase markers. Those you know are so important. I think that's pretty much it, and just lots of pens. I got tons, this is kind of my pen bag. So I really should go through this bag because I have so much in it. So, And one more thing that I found in here, I thought I was done, cold medicine, yay. You just never know when you might come down with a cold, so gotta be prepared. So anyway, that is, yeah, that is what is in my nursing bag. <laughs> so who knew that I had all that kind of goodies in here? So um, are you trying to steal my pins again? I know you are, yes, yes, yes. No pin stealing, no thief, you cannot be a thief. Nope, no chewing on my stethoscope either. That would be terrible if you chewed on my stethoscope. All right, well that's all I got for you people. Um, so hopefully you found that a little bit interesting. Um, see what was in my nursing bag. And I will try to link the, um, my, I will definitely link um, my stethoscope below and then my calipers too if anybody's interested in those because I definitely got those on Amazon. Um, yeah, so anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>